Hello friends. So today's video is going to be a list of books, some of which I think are a little bit underrated and then some that I think are overrated. And I wanted to do this because while this isn't a brand new concept, this is something a lot of people do. Recently, I read the book, The Game of Fate. I can't even mention this book without laughing every single time. And I did a whole video kind of dedicated to this, this work. And it's a Hades and Persephone retelling that takes place in modern day. It is primarily just about how much Hades is lusting after Persephone. And there really is very little in the way of relationship building, character development, world building. It's really honestly like they meet, he immediately wants to do things with her. And then it's just jumping around various different scenes, somewhat convoluted timeline, until eventually he actually has the opportunity to maybe get to know her a little bit better, get to know her. I was so curious what the average rating was for this book, because while I understand taste is subjective, it's I'm not going to try to claim that something is objectively good or objectively bad. I have just read a lot of fantasy, and I was surprised to find that this book's average rating was 4.14. And the reason I say I was surprised is because, well, one, that's like, that's a pretty high rating. <laughs> but also, there's so many books that have significantly lower average ratings. And I'm like, how? I wanted to go through, though, some books that have average ratings that are significantly lower than that 4.14 for A Game of Fate. And then I wanted to talk about some books that have very high average rating. I'm gonna start with the ones that are underrated and internally I'm raging a little bit because I'm fine with not a lot of people loving some of these books, but it's still so hard for me to get over the fact that these books are rated lower than, <laughs> than A Game of Fate. So the first one would be Trailblazer. So this is not fantasy. I understand that this is a completely different genre and this is nonfiction. It is about the first black woman reporter for the Washington Post. I've talked about this book a little bit in the last couple of months and I thought it was a phenomenal read. I do understand that the structure of the story is not to everyone's liking. The first portion of the book is focused primarily on her as a journalist. And then the second portion of the book is her personal life. And then I, I find that the third portion is kind of looking back on everything that she's experienced and then what she's learned and then looking to the future. And so obviously because of that structure, you find that she's going to repeat some things because when she's talking about her work life, she'll mention certain moments in her work life where she was impacted by things in her personal life. For example, getting pregnant or getting married, things like that. And then obviously when she talks about her personal life, she goes more in depth with those things. But some of the negative reviews are like, it jumps around all the time. I'm, con I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make, I'm really truly, if you feel confused or if you don't like the way that she structures the story, that's completely valid. I'm more frustrated that that seemed to be a common complaint in those reviews. And to me, that's such an insignificant thing. And this book's average rating, 3.78. But 4.14 <laughs> compared to that rating, it just ugh, it hurts. I already feel like 3.78 is way too low. But also, this is just why average ratings don't mean anything to me. It's part of why I don't rate books, because I understand that there are times that I'm like, I thought this book was fun. Five stars in my head, and then something that's really important really moving. I'm like, I don't know. I was bored. So three, I guess. Like that's in my mind how I think sometimes because it's also personal. I'm using my hands too much because I'm, I'm trying not to let, it's like what I want to have come out of my mouth is coming out through my hands. Next two would be The Wolf and the Woodsman and <laughs> For the Wolf. Both of them have wolf titles. And these are books that came out in 2021. They are one of them, I would say, for The Wolf is kind of a fantasy romance hybrid, where it really is a fantasy story. But there is a romantic subplot that I would say is pretty significant to the plot, if not about equal to the fantasy plot line. And I enjoyed this one. It's a little familiar, and I think some of the comparisons to 
other works that are also involving similar types of folklore and similar types of atmosphere. I understand why some people, when they saw those comparisons, picked this book up and felt like maybe it wasn't as strong as some of the other ones it's been compared to, or why maybe they like some of the other ones more. And therefore, this one to them just sort of paled in comparison. With The Wolf and the Woodsman, this is a kind of a story about stories. And you see thematically the way that so many people are actually connected through stories or certain things that have been passed down through religion, through culture, things of that sort. How obviously over time, it changes and it holds different meaning to different people. But then when you come together, you recognize or you hopefully can start to see that maybe we're more connected than we ever realized. That's one of the things that I really liked about The Wolf and the Woodsman. There is a romantic subplot in that one as well, but regardless, these are both fantasy romance hybrids. Neither of those books have explicit scenes between the characters, between the love interests. And there's a part of me, I understand that people go into fantasy romance for different reasons. Sometimes you want the romance part and you want it to be a little bit more than just character building and relationship building. Sometimes you truly do want the steamy stuff. And so for that reason, if that's what you're looking for, obviously you're gonna get that more in that book, A Game of Fate, than you're gonna get it in those other two books. I think A Game of Fate is very much about the steaminess. And then these other two books, part of what I think is steamy is the tension and the buildup and seeing these characters start to understand each other and things of that sort. Like th that to me is what really connects me. And so where I'm going with this is if all those other things, in my opinion, are stronger than in this one over here, they're just missing the really steamy details. Is that enough to make the difference? Because one of these, The Wolf and the Woodsman has a 3.60 average rating and For the Wolf has a 3.67. That's such a drastic difference. The last for the underrated books for today would be She Who Became the Sun, which is sitting at 3.95. 3.95 is not a bad average rating and by no means am I the kind of person that sees a somewhat lower average rating and immediately decides that a book isn't worth picking up. But this is an example of a story where I think it's far more literary than it is fantastical. And I think a lot of fantasy fans went into this book thinking it was going to be maybe more action packed. Maybe it would be more of a magic system. And instead, the pacing was a little strange in this one. And I also think it is far more thematic. It feels in the writing itself much more historical, much more formal, and like I said, more literary. But once again, I just think about the writing and I think about the way that the author parallels the different characters in this book. And I think about the research that had to have gone into being able to write within this historical setting and then also incorporating fantasy elements that are still tied to certain beliefs in that time. Just so much went into that. And I just think 3.95 is too low. Sort of segueing into some of the overrated books for today. So the first one I'm gonna start with, one of them would be a Sanderson novella which is at 4.53, which is incredibly high. I do want to say I understand why the novellas are rated so high because generally the only people who are going to be picking up the novellas are the really diehard fans. And so chances are they're more than likely going to enjoy it. However, <laughs> The Hero of Ages, which is the third book in the Mistborn trilogy, which also is going to get mostly fans because if you didn't like the first book, Okay, maybe you give the second book a try. But then if you don't like books one and book two, you're probably going to lose some people before you get to book three. So you're really going to get people that had to have mostly enjoyed one and two. But the average rating for Hero of Ages is 4.5. And I'm like, Hero of Ages? Oh man, the, like the ending, the way everything comes together, it makes you kind of look back at the rest of the trilogy and you're like, what? Because you're seeing all the foreshadowing that was laid out. You see these details that were put in all along. You start to, it makes it so that when you, you want to read 
the books again. And when you read the books again, you're like, oh man, you have a new appreciation. And there's just so much about how it was all crafted as a trilogy as a whole that I think you really only see after you finish that, that third book, obviously, right? Another reason why I think completely arbitrary average ratings just don't reflect to me the actual quality of a book. It's There's too many other factors at play. I have done videos like this in the past, so I'll have some other ones linked. But the last one I'm gonna mention, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know this is the one that's gonna make a lot of people like, excuse me, no, that book is great. And that would be The Martian. I DNF'd The Martian. I, uh, it wasn't for me. And I'm honestly surprised at just how many people love The Martian. I can just feel my friend Jessie from the channel Jessie May being like, no, because <laughs> she loves The Martian and she loved Project Hail Mary. And I'm sorry, Jessie, and I'm sorry to all of you that love this book. An average rating of 4.40, that's a really high average rating. And it's kind of strange because I see so many people who feel so daunted by science fiction and fantasy because in the case of science fiction, they're like, oh, I just sometimes can get a little overwhelmed by all the pseudoscience or I can get a little overwhelmed by all the math that's involved or all of the different things having to do with space. And you see people that literally get hung up on the science parts of science fiction. And then with, with fantasy, you see people that feel so overwhelmed by different magic systems, very hard magic and complex magic systems. And so it's really surprising to me that this did get such mass appeal. I know there's a movie, but I'm surprised that people didn't watch the movie and then when they went to pick up the book, were like, oh, I like the movie more. <laughs> like I thought more people would feel that way because I, I just am surprised. I'm just so surprised that so many people have been drawn to it. I'm especially surprised because I found the main character to be pretty unbearable. I'm very sorry for all the ones uh, that I think are maybe a little high. So anyway, that's it for some underrated and overrated books. Let me know if some books that you are honestly shocked when you have seen the average ratings. Let me know if some books that you don't mind the average rating until you see another book that has a much higher average rating. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day though. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.